Hey guys, what is up? It's Kat here. Thank you so much for coming back and joining me today. Apologies about the different and much more bland um, backdrop. This is actually where I film like auditions and stuff and it's a little too cumbersome for me to take down by myself. And I figured, you know what, whatever, we're just gonna film in front of here today. Uh, apologies, but the Star Wars background isn't going anywhere, don't worry. <laughs> it's actually just behind all of this. But yes, thank you guys so much for coming back and joining me. We have a fun video today in store uh, that I've been really curious to do. I asked you guys in my latest community post to drop your unpopular Star Wars opinions that you would be willing to share for the sake of a video where I go through them and either agree or disagree. And wow, you guys really showed up. Um, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time that I probably will not be able to get to all of these. I really was only expecting maybe like four people to, <laughs> to put their opinions, but we have over a hundred comments on here. So I know I'm not gonna be able to plow through every single one of these, but thank you so much for sharing. And guys, there's some juicy stuff in here, but you guys have some opinions. <laughs> However you feel, whatever your stance is, it doesn't make you any less of a Star Wars fan, even if you have the most unpopular opinion in the world. I just want to put that out here. We're not here to shame anybody's beliefs or opinions or emotions towards any of the films or characters or whatnot. That's not the purpose of this video. This is just for good fun. And I think it's fun <laughs> when people are willing to share some of their more unpopular beliefs with Star Wars because within this fandom, we all have a lot of different thoughts. I'm hoping that we're not gonna be seeing any roasting of people's thoughts and opinions in this comment section, so. And I have to be honest, this video <laughs> is very heavily inspired by one of my favorite YouTubers, D'Angelo Wallace. If you guys are a fan of commentary YouTube, I'm sure you know of him. His channel has blown up. So he's one of my favorite YouTubers and he has a series of his own called Here's Why You're Right versus Here's Why You're Wrong. He goes through his subscribers' comments and agrees with them or disagrees. Yeah, so this is inspired by his vids. I will link him below. He's literally my favorite YouTuber at the moment. I'm sure some of you guys have watched some of his stuff, but if not, do yourself a favor and check him out. And again, I just want to stress just because I disagree with your opinion is not mean I'm trying to like roast you or embarrass you or anything and I have to thank you guys for being willing to share these and have me go through them uh, yeah and be willing to you know agree or disagree so again I just want to make that clear I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings here if I disagree with your opinion and a lot of these I might agree with like I'm very curious to see what the split is gonna be like here so I'm just gonna stop talking and we're just gonna jump right in okay Siege of Mandalore is way better than the entire sequel trilogy. This one got a lot of thumbs up. Okay, um, my gut response right now is to be like a neutral in the middle. I neither agree nor disagree with that. Um, okay. Okay, for the sake of choosing sides here, I'm gonna say I agree a little bit, a little bit. I don't know. The, the Siege of Mandalore final arc of Clone Wars had me feel this type of way that I never felt during the sequel trilogy. So that is my justification for that. Okay, moving on. Sequels shouldn't be the Skywalker trilogy because Rey isn't a Skywalker. Right, but the, Rey isn't the main thing about the sequels. Like there are Skywalkers. It is a continuation of like Luke and Leia's story, even though they're pretty much passing the torch and they kind of take it back, back seat and like the whole Skywalker message of bringing peace and hope to the galaxy. So I'm gonna politely disagree. If you can get past the execution, Jar Jar, little Anakin, attack of the clones romance, the world building and politics of the prequel trilogy make the original trilogy even better. The original trilogy goes from this intimate story about our heroes fighting against an evil empire to this grand story of how a democracy can turn into a dictatorship right in front of everyone's eyes. I'm gonna say a heavy agree with that. Um, everyone here knows prequel trilogy is my favorite for this exact reason stated. The expansion of the storyline and the world building that takes place in the prequels is my absolute favorite. Unpopular opinion, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru taught Luke how to be patient and self-control from the start balanced. If Anakin were to live in that same lifestyle, then he would have reached his prime level like Mandalorian Luke or beyond. Ooh, that's a really good point. I'm gonna say agree. 
Yeah, 100% agree, because you're exactly right. Luke had this type of patience and discipline instilled on him by Uncle Owen. You know, Luke was always trying to be ambitious and looking for, like, the next best thing, and Uncle Owen always had to, like, keep him grounded. Whereas Anakin was the same way. His fault was he was always looking towards the future, looking for the next best thing, yada yada, and look where it took him. Ace Windu is overrated. He's my least favorite Jedi, and everything that is wrong with the Jedi. Unfortunately, I agree a little bit. Okay, I think Mace Windu is a boss. I love watching him fight Palpatine. I think that's one of the best scenes in all of the prequel films, but you're 100% right. He's so abusive and rude towards Anakin, and I firmly believe that if he had shown the slightest bit more respect, towards Anakin and put some more responsibility on him instead of treating him like a little kid. Like Mace Windu was so patronizing to like everybody and I feel like that leads to his downfall. If he was the slightest bit nicer and more understanding and let Anakin take the reins a little bit more, then maybe none of this would have happened. Like I firmly believe that. Do I think he's overrated? I, I don't know. There's no denying that he has the best lightsaber other than Darth Maul. I like this one. Rey shouldn't be related to either Palpatine or the Skywalkers. Just a normal girl who stumbled into the rebellion. You know what? I am gonna say I agree because part of me was a little bit disappointed to learn that she, when we eventually learned, uh, her heritage, I don't know, rooted for her more, not because I'm against her being related to Palpy or whatever, but I was rooting for her more when she was just nothing. And when Kylo Ren dissed her and he was like, you're literally nobody, it's fine. Like, I'm not 100% sure, but I agree with that in the sense that I wasn't super thrilled that she was a Palpatine. And I think it would have been a more genuine storyline and kind of fit in more with the vision from the start if she had no ties to either of these, you know, two huge names and if she was just kind of herself. Alden Ironreichs, I'm never gonna be able to pronounce his name right. Portrayal of Han Solo was great. He acts as if he's super confident, but we can see at certain points throughout Solo how scared he is. I like that he shows that vulnerability. I think he brings a new dynamic to the character, but still seems the same Han we see at the beginning of A New Hope. I agree a thousand percent. I truly feel bad for the cast of Solo because that movie was so poorly received when really it had nothing to do with them, in my opinion. I thought everyone's performance was great, but especially, <laughs> but especially Alden's, who had humongous shoes to fill. Harrison Ford, literally, like, that is the biggest challenge, which is why I think a lot of people were so turned off by the solo, the prospect of a solo film to begin with because everyone was like, why would you, like, Harrison's already perfect. Why would you try to redo that or bring someone in new and give them that ginormous challenge? But I think Alden did an incredible job. Like he totally brought himself to the role but paid perfect homage to the character and exactly like you're saying, brought new dynamics to the character. I agree 100%. Padme is an underrated female character. Yes, although I would not consider that an unpopular opinion. Anyone who thinks that she's overrated, I'm sorry, but you're so right. Padme is underrated. I still hope that one day they make movies or TV shows about the Old Republic. There is so much potential in it. I agree, especially after I just did my reaction to the Old Republic cinematic trailers because I did miss out on those video games when they were a thing. And I, 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 I agree 100%. I would love to see more of that. And I feel like there is so much untapped just amazing material there, like, oh, I like the corny dialogue in the prequels. I think that's part of what makes them good. <laughs> Power to you. I don't know how I feel about the corny dialogue. I think I'm able to look past it just because I'm looking at uh, Hayden Christensen. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to say I agree only because the dialogue has never bothered me to the point where I like physically cringed and like couldn't handle it. This is an interesting one. Not everything George Lucas did was perfect. And you know what? I'm gonna have to agree with that. I think that's an interesting statement, but I think it's true and it's okay. Doesn't mean we love him any less. Like he is still literally a God tier human being and like always will be. Episode two is very underrated. Yes, we all know I, 
I agree with that completely. <laughs> Although I feel like the love for episode two is starting to kind of blossom a little bit. I don't know, I've seen on like Star Wars Twitter, people are starting to appreciate it a little bit more. So hopefully maybe it starts to take its rightful place at the top of the Star Wars tier list. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting one. The lightsaber duels in the prequels are way over choreographed and come off as wildly corny. Anakin versus Obi-Wan is the worst offender? That's bold. That's a bold- this is what I wanted though. See, now we're getting into the, like the juicy stuff. I am going to politely disagree. That scene, it, if it does come off as like wildly over the top and like extra choreographed, I think it's because it's a very high stakes heat of the moment scene where these two super powerful Jedi slash master and apprentice are like fighting for their lives knowing that one of them is gonna walk away and the other isn't. So I think it's appropriate. I'm sorry, I like your bold opinion though, but I'm going to have to disagree politely. Charlie, lol, you already know mine, but maybe you can help me open the eyes of others. That evil blasphemy of a saber that was in the sequels was so horrible. Charlie's referring to Kylo Ren's lightsaber that he disliked. And you know what? I'm, I'm gonna, uh... I don't know, I feel like I liked it at first, but the more I look at it and analyze it, I don't understand how you wouldn't burn your own hand on that. So you know what? I'm gonna agree. <laughs> Unpopular opinion one. Everyone saying that their favorite Star Wars movie is the best Star Wars movie is wrong unless their favorite is A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back. Edit. Unpopular opinion number two. There should be no Sith in canon after Return of the Jedi, so to value Anakin's sacrifice, which is why Kylo and Snoke worked in the first two sequels, because they are pretty much just cultists. Hmm, interesting. There should be no Sith in canon. But I'm gonna have to disagree, because I feel like the Sith are a necessity in some ways, and I'm also just team dark side. So, I don't know. I, I feel like there will always be, like, some Sithy folks lurking around. I don't know. Star Wars The Clone Wars Movie 2008 is not a bad movie. Yes, I agree. Power to baby Jabba. <laughs> Kylo Ren's hips are his best feature. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm gonna say his hair. He's got great flow. Star Wars needs to take a vacation from PG slash PG-13. Would love to see some darkness in the dark side and more wars in the Star Wars. I do love how the Clone Wars push the boundaries and Rogue One's hallway scene was to die for. Even Solo had a few brief moments of grit in the trenches, but a Star Wars title ugh, centered on some grim slash dark imagery would be welcome. I agree 100%. I've rambled about this all along. I just want to see an R-rated Star Wars movie, like power to the max, like lightsaber fighting, just something like Sith action, whatever. I agree a thousand percent. I don't think we'll ever get there. I think you're right. I think we're just going to come close to it with these like brief little moments uh, sprinkled into the movies, but y'all know I'm fully on board. I have said it. I just want a Quentin Tarantino directed R-rated Star Wars film. <laughs> Ooh, this is a divisive one. Solo is the best Disney Star Wars film. I'm gonna disagree only because I just, I think Rogue One is better, but that's just my opinion, not knocking you. I think Solo is definitely an underappreciated Disney era Star Wars film that more people should give a second chance. Popular opinion, I like Jar Jar Banks and I found him funny. Yes, I agree 100% and I get knocked for this so much. I don't understand where all the Jar Jar hate comes from. Like he is, he genuinely makes me laugh even now as a 23 year old woman. Like not even just when I was a kid, still now to this day. So I agree a thousand percent. Here's a, here's a juicy one. That Jedi are just as bad as the Sith. In some aspects, yes. I feel like overall, though, I want to disagree. Because the Jedi would never actively just murder people to prove a point like Darth Maul would. I'm curious to hear what other people say about that. Ooh, the Clone Wars made Count Dooku a bloodthirsty sadist when that's not how he really was in the movies or Legends at all. It looks genuinely sad to have to cut off Anakin's arm and attack the clones, and it sounded like he was really trying to reach Obi-Wan man-to-man -man, when he captured him. If there's anything that show did wrong, it's that. Everything else is fine. You know what? I'm gonna give that to you. I agree. I, I agree. You make some really good points, and yeah, I think the Clone Wars really, 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 like, vilifies Count Dooku and makes him, like, you know, an overarching, like, antagonist when 
he is kind of different in the films, so. Oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> Attack of the Clones is the worst Star Wars film. You guys know what I'm gonna say to that one. I disagree. <laughs> I think Night Owl, you said this knowing that that was gonna trigger me and you've succeeded. I loved Padme and Anakin together, but I think that we needed more scenes with them in the movies because without Clone Wars, we would have never really seen how their relationship really develops in the years. It is still my favorite ship though, LOL, love you. I agree, and you know what? That especially is the case for Revenge of the Sith. Padme is a little just blip in that movie, and that is the perfect film where they could have injected a little more of like Padme and Anakin, like, stuff and also like i don't know there's just uh, i agree i agree Ooh, season seven of the clone wars is better than revenge of the sith i'm gonna disagree only because i feel like oh, the last the final arc the last four episodes are what carry the final season that i that being said i don't think everything before the final arc is comparable to revenge of the sith so I'm gonna have to politely disagree. I'm sorry. Here's one that did catch my attention when I was taking a quick little browse through the comments. Season one of Manda was bad. I dislike baby Yoda and many more. I'll probably edit if I can recall. I, I don't understand. Like people who don't like baby Yoda, help me understand where you're coming from with that. I just, I think that is just, a baseless claim <laughs> like how could you not love baby yoda like maybe you are just stone cold i i don't know i don't know Ooh, rogue one is overrated without the vader hallway scene it wouldn't be that good the whole reputation of that movie is based off of one scene and outside of that it's a slow play <laughs> it's slow <laughs> it's slow paced and predictable. I want to say I disagree only because I just, I think Rogue One is like an incredible standalone film. It introduces really likable characters that you can actually get like, a little bit attached to and start rooting for throughout the course of just one movie. I love how dark it is. I love that, you know, it's kind of ends very tragically. I'm gonna politely disagree. I, I hold Rogue One in a very high regard. Sure, the hallway scene is like so iconic and amazing and it's one of the best parts of that movie, but the whole, the Battle of Scarif is like amazing. Like, I feel like there's there's so much to that movie that it just, it, it stands out to me. <gasps> oh, Gabriel. Don't hate me for this, but Darth Maul is overrated and overused. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to disagree. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Rebels is as good as Clone Wars. Okay, gonna agree. I honestly genuinely like loved Rebels and there were times when I actually liked that show more than like some Clone Wars episodes. I think Rebels has some of the greatest moments in like all of Star Wars and it definitely I feel like is underrated a little bit like and kind of lives in the shadow of the Clone Wars when really it brings us some amazing content so I'm going to agree. Oh here we go. Darth Maul should have stayed dead in The Phantom Menace. I get trying to expand on making his backstory and overall return as a villain in the Clone Wars and Rebels, but he wasn't that much of an interesting character to begin with and gets killed by a Padawan Obi-Wan. Also, episode three is the best Star Wars movie, period. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I mean, I think we all know where I stand here. You guys know Darth Maul is my everything. I think he's one of the most interesting characters and it's such a shame that he does just get snipped right out of the Phantom Menace when it has all this buildup, like look at this tough, scary guy with horns. And then there's just nothing until the Clone Wars. So I'm gonna disagree. I think he's a perfect character to bring back in the reason that he is so tormented and does have these years of just agony and waiting to come back and strike. And I think that is what makes him very dynamic as a villain that you can kind of sympathize with. That's gonna be what I say about that. I'm not shaming you for your opinion, but that's just how I feel about Darth Maul. I liked the milking scene in The Last Jedi. I'm sorry, but I disagree. Okay, I liked it at first. I thought it was funny comedic relief and I feel like people dwell on it too much, but I, I don't think it was necessary. <laughs> This shouldn't even be an unpopular opinion, but Hayden Christensen's acting as Anakin Skywalker is great. And the best performance of the prequel trilogy. Wow. You know what? Sure, yeah, I agree. I, I never question his acting. Like I said, maybe that's 
because I'm blinded by my love for him. I feel like he gets shamed for no reason at all when he has a really tough character to try to execute. I feel like there's other amazing performances in the prequels though. Like I feel like Ewan McGregor is phenomenal. You know what, I'm gonna give it to you. Only because like I said, Anakin's role I think is like the absolute hardest when you have to have that drastic of a moral compass transition uh, within the span of one film. So I agree. Rebio is as annoying as Jar Jar. I have to politely disagree. I don't think either of them are annoying. <laughs> oh, here we go. I loved Raylo in The Rise of Skywalker. I just think Kylo liked Rey ever since he saw her. I know that you don't like that shit, but I absolutely loved it. Love you though, Kat. Carly, you are so cute and sweet. I'm gonna have to politely disagree. <laughs> you guys know how I feel about Raylo. I, I do agree a little bit with you though. I think Kylo and Rey had some sort of weird connection at the start. And perhaps I would have appreciated and been rooting for Raylo more if that connection had been built upon throughout the sequels versus the reverse, which is pretty much Kylo just tormenting Rey a lot of the time and making life really hard for her. So that's that's the only reason I'm gonna disagree. Ooh. The Last Jedi is not only the best film of the sequel trilogy, but the second greatest film of the Skywalker saga, mic drop. I'm sorry, Rolf. Actually, uh, I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna disagree, but I, I say that wanting to like be in the club of people who like absolutely love and praise The Last Jedi. I feel like I'm in that with like certain aspects of it. I wanna feel what you feel, <laughs> but for now I'm gonna disagree. I'm sorry. Ezra is not a good main protagonist for Star Wars Rebels and the show should have been focused more on the other characters. I hope if he shows up in the Ahsoka series that they will change him to be more mature instead of him being so goofy and clumsy. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna agree. I do agree because I think Ezra as a character is a little bit less likable compared to some of the other characters who have like these super cool like backstories and everything in that show so i'm gonna agree a little bit and i agree in the sense that like not that i don't want him to show up again but i think that he probably will hopefully be done differently when he's like a little bit more mature i think he is super mature by the end of that show i think he definitely does have a transition of behavior throughout the show oh here's a juicy one bo katan deserves to be the ruler of mandalore more than din does she's a proven leader knows more about actual mandalorian history slash culture and has been fighting for Mandalore since the Clone Wars. She wants what's best for her people. Din has really only fought for his and Grogu's best interests and only got as far as he did because of indestructible armor. Still love Din, but think Bo-Katan should rule. I'm gonna agree with you on that one for every reason that you just said. And also just to add like, Din does not seem like a people person. <laughs> he does not seem like he would want that responsibility. I, I, I don't think. I feel like he wouldn't enjoy that, so I'm going to agree, yeah. The Mandalorian is better than the Clone Wars and the prequels overall. It is what Star Wars has always needed to be, a space western slash samurai opera with many of a variety of planets, species, and much more to explore. Expanding the universe like we have never seen before besides just good versus bad, white versus black, there is gray in the mix too. You know? You make a really good point, and I have to- I can't say that I 100% disagree because I do feel very much like when I watch The Mandalorian, it's like, yes, this is- this is Star Wars. Like, this is- this is how Star Wars is supposed to make you feel. Do I think it's better than the Clone Wars and the prequels, though? Those two combined versus Mando. I'm gonna have to politely disagree, just because I, I don't think Mandalorian is superior to both of them combined. I think the Clone Wars is an incredible series. And I say that as someone who does love the prequel era and all that stuff. And so for me, I appreciate like the world building in that aspect. So I'm gonna politely disagree, but you make some really, really good points. And I do feel like 100% The Mandalorian is like exactly what Star Wars is supposed to feel like. So apologies if I did not get to your unpopular opinion, but perhaps consider yourself lucky. Um, again, I don't want anyone to like roast anybody here in the comment section. Let's just like, let's just keep this as a fun, lighthearted little thing where we can all feel free to share our opinions. And like I said, however you feel, whatever opinion you may have, it could be the most unpopular opinion of all. And it does not make you any less 
of a Star Wars fan and you shouldn't ever feel shamed for it. So I just want to totally stress that again, no hate here in the comments. But yeah, let me know if you guys enjoyed this video and if you would want to see me do another round. Um, again, I'm sorry that I didn't get to every single person's comment, but thank you so much for being willing to share your opinion and thanks for commenting guys, because I really was worried I was only going to get like three responses and that this video was gonna be like two minutes long. So I appreciate your guys' willingness to participate. So thank you so much for that. As always, let me know what video recommendations you guys have down below. I love to hear from you guys. And if you have any other ideas, please feel free to let me know and share. But yes, I hope that you guys are doing so, so well as always and that you guys are staying safe and healthy as always. Thank you so, so much for watching and spending some time with me here today. I really appreciate it. May the force be with you guys always, and I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.